This weekend, the premier game is Buccaneers and Packers. And while the Packers have been somewhat underwhelming over the course of the first two weeks of the season, certainly opening week against the Minnesota Vikings, with these two quarterbacks matching wits, perhaps for the final time ever, it's clearly going to lead this the show and lead the day, all of the shows on Monday morning. It's the America's Game of the Week on Fox with a late kick on Fox. Your Sunday night game's kind of an eh game. It's Niners Broncos. Your Monday nighters another eh game. It's Cooper Rush versus the Giants. And so Packers, Buccaneers, I think is going to be the most talked about game of this weekend. They've kind of cleared the deck for this one in some ways as well. And I'm not convinced this is the last time these two teams will match up. I mean, both these squads, the Packers and the Buccaneers, are playoff caliber teams. I think we'll see both of them in January. And in the NFC, I think there's limited great teams. Now, both these squads, you could argue, are flawed, but I think there's a good shot we could see them in a divisional round coming up here in January. And there's a part of me that just believes that Brady's final swan song doesn't go out with a blip or a whimper, that there's a couple of really massive matchups and for all the marbles type of games before he steps foot into civilian land. I just got a feeling that's the way this thing is going to shape up in January. And certainly Rodgers, the Packers, have kind of been his his whipping boy at, at times since he's been in New England and then now with, with the Buccaneers because for all of those years that Brady was getting to the Super Bowl, Rodgers wasn't. For all of those gluttonous seasons where they weren't even great Patriots teams but still got to the Super Bowl, we had great Packers teams or so we thought that fell short. So we never got Rodgers-Brady in the big game, and we still won't because I think this is it for Brady after the season. But we could get them in another playoff game. But remember a couple of years ago, the Packers were the one seed. The Packers were hosting that playoff game against the Bucs. And when push came to shove at the end of that game, it was Rodgers who couldn't make a throw, didn't make a throw, and then Kevin Stefanski didn't trust him to make another throw and gave the ball back, and that was all she wrote. Rodgers has had this amazing career where I think for the last six seasons or so, pretty much a consensus. That's the most talented quarterback we've ever seen. Agility, ability to slide out of the pocket, arm strength, arm accuracy, making lesser wide receivers great wide receivers, Connections on Hail Marys. I mean, Rodgers, there's not really a flaw in his mechanics or his abilities. He's probably the most talented. He is the most talented player ever to play the quarterback position in many ways. In many ways, the most refined. Mahomes is amazing. Randall Cunningham was amazing. John Elway was amazing, but... I think across the board, not everybody can get a 9 or a 10 in every one of those boxes like Rodgers can. But Rodgers has been without, without that ring. Besides one in 2010, and we thought that there would be many more after that, and he just, one thing or another has led to him being without, and some of it's been on the franchise, some of it was on Mike McCarthy, some of it's been on him, and some really bad moments in playoff games in the last couple of seasons. I mean, Rodgers has been, again, a whimper in the playoffs when the Packers have been the better team. So this is interesting because, of course, it's two Hall of Famers, first ballot guys. It's two of the greatest ever, and this is... Perhaps their last shot at it together against one another. It might be their second to last if they meet in the playoffs, but this is kind of coming to an end. 
It's never been like Brady Manning because they haven't met every single season, but they've been linked. And they've been linked in the fact that Rodgers does things that Brady can't, but Brady has all the hardware that Rodgers will never have. It's a have and have nots. I don't want to say that Rodgers has had a tragic career, but there's a disappointment there. There's a hollowness there that he's been this great for this long. The Packers have been this good for this long, and there's only one Super Bowl appearance. Just one. One chance in the Super Bowl for for Rodgers. So it's interesting because all of that is built into it, and it's just as always going to feel like Brady has that leg up. This game is in Tampa Bay. In this game, it's a pick em. Buccaneers and Packers have both looked at times pretty good versus not so good, so they're kind of the same team coming in. The Bucs might be 2-0 and and the Packers are 1-1, one and one, but certainly the first two weeks of Buccaneers football hasn't looked great against the, the Cowboys and the Saints. But it's really about those two guys and about one guy who's going to ride off into the sunset with all of the jewelry. And when one guy that was great and maybe could have been greater, but just has almost none of it. And boy, to put it into perspective, I mean, Aaron Rodgers sat for three years to back up Brett Favre. So it was a long time coming. He finally won the Super Bowl in 2010, and now that's 12 years ago. I mean, 12 years is a mighty long time that Rodgers has been good enough, great enough to win a Super Bowl. But that's a 12-year hiatus from doing so. It's just we haven't even seen him in that game in 12 years. So it took him a while to get there, to even get on the field, and then has been an eternity since he's been there. And he's still been playing at an MVP level almost every season during that run. I think the Packers are a better team than the Buccaneers. I think at some point in time, Rodgers will figure this out with his wide receivers regularly. I think you're going to see Lazard. I think you're going to see Watson. I think you're going to see Dobbs really come together, and I think they're going to be a very good passing team later on in the season. I think that defense also has the potential to be really good, and Rodgers still has more left in the tank than Brady. I think at the end of the year, we're going to get to Week 18, and the Packers will look like the better team, and yet I think at the end of the season, there just feels like Rodgers will be left again holding the bag without the jewelry. It just, you can't help but feel that way, that there's just something that's missing, maybe the little pixie dust of magic that Rodgers needs to create and he just doesn't. You know, that that Brady just always had. That Brady just always had a different gear when it mattered most to either do it himself or that others did it around him. And maybe some of that was because he had greatness exuding from him, Maybe some of it was just dumb luck. You know, it is. Why do the Seahawks call for a pass on the goal line? Is that because of Tom Brady? Probably not. So that's a little dumb luck. It's kind of Brady's good fortune that that he played Jared Goff in a Super Bowl. But there's a part of this that I, I can't help but think the Packers are the better football team, but that the Bucs still have a better chance at ending in a Super Bowl. Or as how do you read Packers and Bucks late kick on Sunday? Look, Tom Brady will really show me something. Not that he has to show me anything in his career, but at he's this, got to prove something to you. No, but I mean, look, this has been a wild few weeks of controversy around Tom Brady, right? So now you're talking about no Evans, Godwin banged up. Oh, by the way, the Bucks continue to have offensive line problems besides Tristan Wirfs. All their main guys are either hurt or have left. If they go at home and they just kind of handle their business. And it may not have to be pretty, and they beat the Packers. You know, we're looking around again in NFC saying, will the real best contender please stand up? The Rams have flaws, the Packers have flaws, the Bucks have flaws. I mean, if the Bucks win this game, it just is going to kind of feel like we're setting the tables here with the wild card of it all being the Philadelphia Eagles of, 
geez, this could just be an easy path for Tom Brady and them to get to the Super Bowl. On the flip side, I actually lean Packers in this game and talking about all your stuff you just mentioned with, with Rodgers and everything that I've just talked about the NFC, I kind of feel like this is an excuseless season for Aaron Rodgers. And it starts right here. Go win these games and get the tiebreakers, get the playoff games back in Lambeau, divisional round if that happened. Like, this could decide that. Set yourself up, and let's not hear at the end of the year, you know, special teams stunk, this happened, that happened. There's no great team in the NFC. Get to another Super Bowl. Let's go. It starts with beating the Bucks and Brady and getting the leg up on them here. The three best teams in the NFC are the Bucks, the Packers, and the Eagles. Those are the three best teams in the NFC. And... None of them are going to be great teams in January. Somebody's going to have to get hot, and somebody's going to have to get a few heroic performances from their QBs or defenses. Now, you already put the Eagles ahead of the Rams? I do. I think the Rams are permanently flawed this season. I said it coming into the year. I have not seen anything in the first two weeks that makes me believe that they can be great this season. Yeah, I mean, again, the only thing I I would say is I'm not there yet, but I totally agree with you that I'm seeing those flaws Everybody so far has gotten their took us kicked by the Bills, and that's what the Rams did in the second half. They did collapse and make a couple plays down the stretch for Atlanta, and a better team they beat got them. Sloppy against they Atlanta, got sloppy. but they, they got were really up sloppy. huge in that game. They took their foot off the gas. Uh, it's not, but they at least showed me in that game they're still you know able to put up a bunch of points and do that. I I probably think you're right come the end of the year, but I don't know that I could declare that yet. Well, okay, let's let's even put the Rams in there. There's only four teams that can win the Super Bowl in the NFC. There's only four teams that can get to the Super Bowl in the NFC. Well, hold on, the Niners now have a better chance, I think. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I think that Garoppolo is again just inherently too limited. I think if Trey Lance was really good and could make those splash plays that they've been desperate for. I thought they were certainly a Super Bowl contender. I know they got there last year, but, I mean, look how they had to win those games in the playoffs. That was kind of utterly ridiculous. Look at how they won at Lambeau. Like, Jimmy Garoppolo threw, like, six passes. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo could win the Super Bowl. I can't sit here and say he can't get to the Super Bowl with the Niners. He got to a Super Bowl three years ago with the Niners. And this NFC is more inherently flawed than that NFC. That's true. That's true. I'm not saying I'm picking them, but you, you can't tell me they have no shot to get there. I think the Garoppolo thing is going to wear off. I really do. I think the Garoppolo thing by the, the second half of the season, we're going to start seeing like, oh, it, what, are they really better? Are they really better off? I thought Lance was the solution for him because they've got a really good defense and a really good run game and a good play caller and Debo and Kittle. I, I just think you're inherently limited by, by Garoppolo. No, Lance gives him a higher ceiling to win a Super Bowl. But this NFC sucks, and in two of the last three years, they've made two NFC championship games and a Super Bowl with Garoppolo. I can't sit here and say they can't get to one now. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I think the I know it's early. I think the Eagles have a look. Well, it makes me sick to my stomach. It's hard to disagree. It is very hard to disagree. It, because they now have pieces on offense at every position. They have a run game they can rely on if needed. They have a quarterback now they can rely on if needed. And they have two or three wide receivers they can rely on if needed. Well, Devonta got- Smith and A.J. Brown are right up there with Waddle and Hill, for exactly. sure. Exactly. They, I mean, they just have a lot of different ways they can beat you. And in the NFC East, they're not. I don't think they're going to struggle to win the division. I know you love the Giants. I don't think they're going to struggle. I think they'll end oh, up clinching the that win. division with two or three games to play in the season. And I, I just, I think they got to look. Yeah, I mean, look, the Eagles could win 12, 13 games. I think they win the division with the East Giants to win 10 and, and get to a wild card. <laughs> but, yeah, that's not really going to be competing with Philly. I get it. I don't think the Vikings are capable. I, I don't either. I'm done with the Vikings. I'm already, I'm writing them off. I've had it. I, I got fooled. <laughs> but that's it. The playoff games count as big spots. I can't do it anymore with the Vikings. I'll tell you the teams that I simply discount immediately and I'm going to get I'm sure fury from some of our listeners I discount the Cowboys for obvious reasons I discount the Vikings because of of Cousins specifically I discount the Saints I never believed that Dennis Allen was a great hire there and I discount the Arizona Cardinals I think what they did last week against the Raiders is just basically Kyler Murray playing street ball which you just can't do over 17 games and then win playoff games regularly like that. 
those are teams that are in the conversation for the playoffs that I just completely discount of getting to a Super Bowl.